friends, we are going live today with at the Vagina Doc. And our topic is postpartum CrossFit. So she will be joining us soon. Hello. Nice to see you guys. We are talking about CrossFit today and postpartum comeback. So let's get connected with the Vagina Doc. We'll see. Hello everybody, so nice to see you. Hopefully you're having a great Monday. Here we are. Hello. Hi. See you. I didn't warn you that I'm turning it. Are you able to turn yours or is it inconvenient? Okay, because I'm going to put it on YouTube too and so YouTube is more of the horizontal screen. So good. No problem. Right. Yeah, no problem at all. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you great. Can awesome. you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Well, thank you so much for joining us, um, The Vagina Doc. So if you guys haven't checked out her account, it's at the dot vagina doc. She has some great information on there. And a few weeks back, you posted something about CrossFit, and that really caught my eye, and I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to discuss it with us. So I know you had a busy weekend. I did. Thank you so much for having me. I have been such a fan of your account since I started uh, started working. So I can't tell you how many times where I have referred my patients to your account. Oh God, that's so thank you. Music to my ears. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. And I look forward to continue to work together to share public health. Yes, yes, I, me, me too. Yeah, so this weekend I was, I took a time, took time away and went camping and here I am back at work. <laughs> I, I'm going to be in away for the weekend, so my schedule's different. So I forgot that I was, I had to change the time. So thank I you. I hadn't even announced it yet, so nobody even knows. <laughs> good, good. Okay, good, good. So let's jump into it because we have so many good questions and I'm so excited yeah. to hear your input. Could you tell us before we get started, give us a little bit of your background professionally and then also personally? Sure. So I am uh, currently, I'm a full-time pelvic floor physical therapist at an outpatient orthopedic clinic. Um, I am one of two physical therapists that treats women's health here. And now I am almost 100% women's health uh, at my current role. So I also, I have a concierge practice on the side, but ideally I'm building an online platform where I can okay. do coaching and uh, education. So um, my background related to CrossFit is, so I, I I, when I was in college, I had trained to be a group fitness instructor. I, so I taught Les Mills, body pump, body combat, uh, a core training program called CX Works. And I was underneath the mentorship of the primary researcher for Les Mills International. And she wow. taught me so much. Wow. That's fabulous. So whenever I got to PT school, it, uh, I had continued teaching, and then that was at a CrossFit gym. So I was exposed to CrossFit there, but I didn't have time to be a PT student and uh, well, do CrossFit. Everything in. Yeah. Yes. So I taught my classes, and the great thing was I would teach and work out at the same time. So I got to kill two birds with one stone. That is nice. And then I wanted, I found that in my rotations, I was seeing people that did CrossFit, so I needed to understand more about CrossFit. And um, so at that point, I started doing CrossFit, and now I've been doing it full-time for over two years now, and I'm in the process of getting my uh, level one training and being official because people like that, even though I know all the movements, not a coach, the movements, I know yeah. I have to get my level one. Yeah. So now I am, so I'm a back, my backgrounds and as an athlete, I used to play basketball and soccer and track. And now, um, CrossFit's my sport. And my, my goal is to keep women in CrossFit through and after pregnancy safely and confidently 
rather than seeing them fall out because of issues such as incontinence, pain, diastasis, yes. 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 all yes. of that. Good. Thank you. So we're in good hands. <laughs> okay. So you guys, there's been a little bit of uh, some comments about how you can access this afterwards. So for the first 24 hours, this will be in my story. So you can access it on at my pelvic floor muscles. And then we'll upload it to YouTube probably within a week or two, maybe this week, but I can't guarantee it'll be this week, but it will be on our YouTube channel. So our YouTube is my pelvic floor muscles, no spaces. So you'll go to YouTube and you type it in and it'll automatically insert spaces and you won't see us and say no, no spaces and research it and you'll find us eventually. So um, that's a way that you can access this after, after we're done. All right, so let's just jump in. How do we know, um, how soon can people start CrossFit postpartum? Um, so this, let me just uh, say that a lot of these answers are, it depends. So I'm going to give you a general guideline. So if you're an advanced CrossFitter, meaning you were doing CrossFit while pregnant um, and you've been doing it for a long time, the rules might be a little bit quicker for you. The other rule is how did your uh, delivery go? Did you have a vaginal delivery or did you have a, a cesarean delivery? If you had a vaginal delivery and you had minimal tearing, no issues healing afterwards, you could start going back into the gym and modifying, still participating, but modifying as early as six weeks. Um, if you are cleared by a, your midwife, OB, um, and potentially a PT if you are seeing one. If you are, if you had a cesarean delivery, I would say wait until at least, at least 12 weeks because there are a lot of, a lot of tissues that need to be healed and it's not worth it. It's not worth going back before that. Yeah. So if you are very brand new to CrossFit and you just started, then I would say wait 12 weeks before you go into the gym and you're modifying stuff just to be safe. And my my recommendation is work with a postpartum uh, is it PPA coach. Um, they work. They were trained under Brianna Battles, so they're really great. Um, and then. Also work with a pelvic floor physical therapist that can teach you how to properly brace your core so that if you have a diastasis recti or if you have a little bit of a prolapse, you are managing those properly with whatever movement that you do. That's good. Very good. So um, let's see. How do they – what are some warning signs that if they go back, that they're doing too much or that we're doing too much. So what are some things to watch out for? Like, Hey, slow down. This needs to be modified and back up. Yeah. So warning signs to watch out for that you are doing too much or the movements to advance would be either during or after the workout that you have pain anywhere, pain in your back, your uh, sacroiliac joint. So around your pelvis, pain in your hips, um, neck pain, he headaches, um, vaginal wall pain or pressure, feeling of falling out through prolapse. anything. Yeah, prolapse <laughs> symptoms. Um, if you are leaking urine when you are exercising, so if you're whatever movement, if you're leaking urine, that's a sign that you're not managing pressures well enough to complete the movement. Um, if you are coning through your abdominal wall, so that would be you have a diastasis recti and there's pressure bulging through the um, your your abdominals. So either that could be above your belly button, that could be below, that could be through your belly button. Then that means you're overdoing it uh, and you need to back off a bit. Yep. I liked, if you guys go to her story today, I really like your story because you also emphasize, like, if you feel worse after you did yes. it, right? Like, I forgot about that. Good, yeah, that's a good, that's a good indicator. Yes. Like, 
okay, maybe you're not ready for that, whatever the exercise is. Yeah. Okay. And there, and, and that was such a, uh, a very, that was so helpful for me uh, to share with you guys. So you, there's so many things that are healing in your body that you have to prioritize sleeping and nutrition before you prioritize exercise. I'm the exercise queen and I'm always like exercise, exercise, but I really mean it. Like if you go to the gym and you feel crappy after, think back, did I sleep enough? Did I, how's my nutrition in and prioritize that way because it may not be something that's going on with your body or your intensity it's just you're not setting your body up to perform and breastfeed and take right. care of a newborn etc right. yeah there, it's doing a lot you're, we're requiring a lot of our bodies <laughs> so that's good uh, there was a question we had here. We have a lot of questions, but I'm going to give some priority here to the live questions. So can you go over more about how to properly brace the core? So what are some sure. of the tips for that? And I'd also like you to plug your postpartum program because I saw sure. you have a postpartum program and how can people access that? Yeah. Um, so the deep core brace, let me – let me first review what I consider the deep core brace. Um, so you have your, imagine your deep core is your house. You have a roof of your house. That's your diaphragm. You have the floor of your house. That is your pelvic floor. And then you have the wall. So the deep abdominal layer called the transverse. Can you hear me? It broke up just a little bit. I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Um, my yep. headphones died. Um, so you have your deep abdominal walls, uh, the deep, uh, transverses abdominis, and the multifidus in the back. So essentially, your your what how I cue it, and I cue it differently depending on if a person had a therian delivery versus vaginal delivery. But what I want is I want a little bit of pelvic floor engagement, a little bit of transversus abdominis engagement and control breathing either statically or dynamic breathing. let's just can you can you brace your core and have a conversation without running out like this uh -huh. yeah that's good so then how i know if a person is able to control that brace dynamically is if i cue them hey let's let me i want you to just Engage your deep core, and then perform a squat. I want you to be able to breathe in on the way down. Exhale on the way up and maintain that deep core brace so your back doesn't arch. That's what I mean by the deep core brace. Is that, does that make sense? That's yeah, it does. Uh, mm -hmm. If you guys have any more questions along that line, just type them in and we'll try to get to them, okay? So that was that was very helpful. That gave some uh, objective signs and symptoms to watch out for. But with yeah. that, you know, before you're doing this, you've got to make sure that you are contracting your pelvic yeah. muscle correctly and your transverse, that you know where it is and how to activate it. So let's jump into there. How is it possible to be strong on the outside but weak on the inside? So right. you see these ripped abs and you think, oh my goodness, you, <laughs> but but it's possible to look wonderful on the outside, but have a mushy core. So right. Tell us a little bit. So our bodies are super smart, and if there's a will, there is an absolute way. And you can be an elite games athlete and potentially have a crappy lower have crappy lower abdominal control. So. Uh, what essentially you do when you're strong on the outside is, let's say we, you never learn how to brace your deep core, which I am one. I've never had a baby, but I am someone that didn't know anything about the deep core. Um, and I'm strong in my outer aesthetic muscles. Yeah, strong in my I could lift myself up a rope without my legs. But if you tell me to lift my leg without using those muscles, it's, it's really hard for me. Ah. 
there's another there, so it could be because my muscles are too long and stretched say if i had a 10 pound baby vaginally or it could be that they're so tight it's like my pelvic floor is my bicep and i can yeah. my elbow yeah so they're too weak to, to provide enough support and therefore uh i'm link before strength right yeah. so we've got to have the link before the strength good. exactly good excellent okay so then going along with that is it possible to have uh, issues with CrossFit and prolapse without having a children, a, a baby. Yes. And I am a poster child for that. And now that I'm very much more knowledgeable about what's normal, what's not normal, I'm, I try to advocate for women that have never had a baby as well, because it doesn't matter if you haven't had a baby. You can have a prolapse. When I take a mirror down to my vagina, like, maybe I should not at 25 tomorrow because I'm going to have a hard time standing up throughout the day. Yeah. So, yes, you can have problems and never have a baby. There's many reasons why, but it could be you're too tight. It could be that you have just flexible, connected to It could be that you're just not engaging. The Good. So, train that. Mm -hmm. So let's, there's a couple questions about prolapse that I'd like to talk about. So can you do CrossFit with pelvic organ prolapse? Great question. So I was trying to think about how I was going to answer it. My answer is yes, you absolutely can. Because there are many, many women and men, men manifest differently that are CrossFit right now, asymptomatic, and they have prolapse. So yes, you can. Now, if you have a symptomatic prolapse, then that is it's a little more obvious. But we need to teach you how to manage your brace and therefore your body pressure before we go into uh, movements such as weighted squats, deadlifts, um, jumping, whether that's box jump, jump rope, gymnastics hanging on the rig doing pull-ups. We have to teach how to manage your pressure so you're not bearing down, pushing your organs downward. And making it worse. And making it worse, because you absolutely can make it worse, but you can absolutely manage it really well by changing the way you move, changing the way you breathe, bracing, just bracing just enough or not bracing too much mm -hmm. as you move. So I want to put it a plug also for, no pun intended, uh, but pessaries or some type yeah. of internal support, and then also external support. So there's some shorts that have, you know, built-in perineal support, or there's um, other devices that you can use externally to uh, support the pelvic floor for that extra lift from below. So I love what you're saying, managing the pressure, and sometimes we need extra help. Absolutely. So managing that pressure can be um, several ways there. Good. And when you get a pessary, it's important that you find someone that understands your goal of the pessary. So if you need a pessary for your everyday wear, that might not be strong enough for your when you're working out leg day. So make sure that you understand and, and communicate with your provider, hey, I, I want to do this. Yeah. Uh, so you might need two different pessaries in that case. Good. You may not That's... need one for every day. If you need right. one for every day, you need to, 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 to train with – be a pit pelvic floor feet here, train yeah. with a really good coach before you go back to that process. That's good. So the same uh, answer would apply to weighted squatting. So is this safe with a two to three grade cystocele? So it just really depends on how well you're managing, managing yes. that. In some days, it might not be a day that you can squat. You have good days and you have bad days. So on the bad days, my, my recommendation would be modify. So if it's a deadlift day, do some barbell hip thrusts or um, for squatting, modify and do what I like to do is I like to people have to, to move their head and rotate their upper torso uh, without the okay. lower back and pelvis. Okay. So try to change the system and breathing system so they're, they're still squatting but they're not training 
a whole different way. I like it. I like it. That's good. Okay, so we're moving on from prolapse. Now, this is a nice question, and I, I think that uh, I love that she asked it. So how do I explain to my coach that I need to modify like male coaches who may not get it, or maybe they've never even heard of the pelvic floor. Hopefully yeah. they have, but if they haven't, or if they're not very in tune or engaged, how would you do that? Um, so I was thinking about this as well, and Denise, if you could help me out, because <laughs> um, I get, <laughs> uh, Give them your, send them the link to this video <laughs> on yeah. YouTube. I mean, because they, they've got, they've got to understand the pelvic floor connection and the potential catastrophic uh, uh, events that can occur if the pelvic floor and abdominals aren't engaged. Yeah. Um, so they need to understand it, how, you know, the best way to communicate it. I think it's really going to depend on your relationship with the coach too. It does. But most coaches are going to be open, even if they're males. And, yeah. and I really feel like we're on the edge of just expanding loading information about pelvic health and so yep. they for them to be the best coach that they can they need to understand the pelvic floor connection so yes. um it might cause you to blush a little bit or you may have to do it via text or email and that's okay but just bringing up the conversation and you don't even have to say that it's anything about you personally hey i watched this youtube video and i thought this might be something that you could find of interest because every coach in every sport needs to understand the pelvic floor. Absolutely. Well, really, every great. person in the whole world. <laughs> yes. I mean, we all do. We, we all, all have, have pelvic floor. We're, we're living right now, so yes. someone's had to have intercourse. Yes. Maybe to, get, yes. to, to deliver us. Maybe not, but <laughs> we um, need to have these yeah, conversations. Most of them probably didn't, but yeah, there's some. Um, scenarios that may not. So uh, going to the research. So there was a question on research and I liked that. So I'd like you to jump in here in just a minute. But as I was reviewing PubMed today, you know, uh, what what's out there on CrossFit, uh, there was a nice research article that I will put in my story about, um, specifically it talked about the intra-abdominal pressures that were generated between women who had had children and women who had not had children. And so now I think that was one of the biggest uh, things that the study found, that the women who had children weren't able to generate as high of that intra-abdominal pressure. Because we, and we need that pressure right. to stabilize, right, with that yep. Yep. Um And then something else that is just a good reminder is that exercise doesn't automatically strengthen your pelvic floor. So just because you're doing CrossFit or you're doing squats or you're doing these things, that's not automatically engaging your pelvic floor. You need to um, intentionally and specifically work your pelvic floor. So I'll, uh, again, I'll tag those uh, articles in my story. But do you have anything from a research standpoint, any good articles or any references that you would suggest? So, CrossFit specific, unfortunately, I cannot, I don't think yeah. there's anything out there really on managing hard. pressure, postpartum with movements. I looked for, like, gym, professional gymnasts. I looked for, uh, what else did I look for? I tried to find out what created more pressures. Was it a deadlift versus a squat? And I couldn't find that. Yeah. Um, so, I instead looked at the where your prolapse is, uh, what positions could potentially put you at uh, risk for more symptoms or worse prolapse. And if you have an anterior wall, anterior vaginal wall prolapse, and you are able to control your low back from arching as they go to the squat, you're going to put more pressure in some of the connective tissues that hold on to your organs. And you could essentially make that worse. So not necessarily research specific to CrossFit, but what that means is you've got to see if you are arching your back, if you're doing a weighted squat, and if you have an anterior or front back, if your bladder is dropping or have a cystocele, cysti cystocele, cysti cystocele, and you want to make sure that you are not losing that support for low back. Right. And, that's good. That's good. I appreciate that. 
So uh, a question here on pelvic instability. So basically she's feeling like CrossFit and HIIT are not an option anymore. Do you have any recommendations on modifications or some safe moves? Um, my, some of my favorite things for women that have difficulty moving quickly and difficulty managing pressures is I'm a lover of Okay. Is, is that answer the question? Uh, so yeah. To stay part of a group. You, uh, you broke up just a little bit. So you said that you're a lover of Pilates? Yes, yeah. Pilates. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, so guided. Yeah. You're still able to exercise in a group setting. Uh, you're moving with it's breathing. Good. So that's, a, that's an alternative. Mm -hmm. um, and even... Just remember, with anything that you're doing, we want that, that pelvic floor and that core engaged. So yeah. starting at the very beginning, and you know, you can start activating your pelvic floor and your deep abdominal muscles day one after your yeah. baby. So um, one of my favorite tips that came from a, a physical therapy technician, actually, she was from Columbia, and I loved her so much, and she was like, Janice, Every time you feed the baby, think about squeezing and breathing, squeezing and breathing. And so, you know, how much of your time, especially in the first few weeks, are spent nursing or trying to get the baby to eat one way or another, right? So yeah, um, just take it a little mental, mental time out for yourself while you're doing that and activating can be really helpful. Great suggestion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would you suggest as the best weighted exercise to promote healthy pelvic floor abdominals glutes? Is there anything specific you would? Um, so would the question um, best weighted? Like best, best weighted exercises. Yeah. Um, so squats and deadlifts are really great. Uh, what I like to empower my athletes are is the stronger your glutes are and the more control you have over your glutes and be aware of your pelvic floor the less your pelvic floor has to work it, it really be, is the truth it really is the truth so if you don't have a strong deadlift and you don't know how to really lift your glutes then um that's well, that's a problem so yeah there's no so, heavy squatting single leg squatting with your leg back to the side, leg, all different positions, uh, double leg squatting, hip bridges, barbell, hip yeah. Rock, yeah. deadlifts, single leg deadlifts. I can go on and on. <laughs> now tell us a little bit about your postpartum program. So my postpartum program, um, I was inspired to do that because when I see postpartum women in and I need to hit so much. I'm like, if only I had them starting this immediate postpartum. So basically, it's in three phases, and I just released phase one, which is all about healing, promoting healing to the tissues that were just involved. And this is for vaginal delivery. Okay. And then restoring uh, your uh, the function of your abdominal wall, your diaphragm, and your pelvic floor. So a lot of it is learning how to breathe in all different positions, learning how to kegel in all different positions, mm -hmm. learning how to engage your transverse in all different positions, and then finally for and then build endurance in functional positions. So if you want to overhead press, well, I need to know how to engage your deep core in this position before we start doing more. Mm -hmm. so all about that. And then how do people, it's free, correct? Yes, it's free. And so how do people access it? So right now, um, I have, I posted uh, a, it was my most recent post that if you want it, um, just comment me in the comments or send me a direct message and I will send you a message with the link. I haven't had the chance yet, but I'm going to create a Facebook page where everyone can uh, congregate questions on the uh, FAQ um, lives on that. And then I don't even, I'm really happy with this, Denise. I don't know, I have a website, but I don't know how to get it. So if you go to my website, you can just find often to get it. So I'm figuring that out, but that yeah. should be. Uh, MailChimp. MailChimp is a free service. 
And so, so that's, I'll give you more information on it, but MailChimp is a way that you can get people to subscribe automatically when they visit your website. So, Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. I'm yes. such a beginner. Oh no, I, I learn stuff every day. It's been a huge learning curve and it's fun. So it's yeah. really, really engaging. All right. Uh, let's see, just maybe one or two more questions here before we need to go. Well, is there anything that you would like to share? Because the, I, you know, we, we got some really good questions and some good engagement. Is there anything you'd like people to know before we Exit. So I really liked about uh, the question that you had sent me about how to, to manage a diastasis reptile during uh, with CrossFit. And I want to empower people that, first of all, um, you can still exercise with the diastasis, but I want to make sure that you are understanding how to control the coning out of the diastasis. So what you're looking for is when you're moving – do you have coning through the abdominal wall? So look for that. Once you know how to control it, then you can do an exercise. You can continue. Now, I wouldn't say within, unless, um, this, is, this isn't for everyone, but hanging on a rig takes time to control your, your diagnosis. Uh, it takes a long time. So I wouldn't expect that postpartum with a diastasis can hang on a, on a rig immediately six, 12 weeks. It might take up, upwards of a year. And I, will, I encourage you to be patient. Think of the long term. Of what you're doing. Good. Good. Second is team up with a pelvic floor PT that is willing to test you and test your strength in the positions that are meaningful to you. So not just on your back, but also standing in a squat position. If that's what you're symptomatic, where you're right. symptomatic, yeah. I don't see that. So so I sit there, I put a headlamp on, and I am right. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. This, so make sure you team up with someone that is willing to to do, uh, to, to meet your goals and yeah. And think outside the box, right? Like yeah. What are you trying to achieve, and how can they help you to achieve that? So exactly. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're here for. Yes. So, uh, and then in general, I think you know, there's multiple questions on how you can modify and how you can make things safe. So I think a general rule of thumb is you can decrease the range of motion, or you can decrease the repetitions, or you can decrease the weight, um, yeah. and and then also using gravity to either help you or work against. Right. right. So. so because this is such a, 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 a important question, my plan is to put, that's going to be basically be what phase two is about, is okay. teaching people how to scale that, pull up, what are movements you can do, how to develop that. Um, then always, uh, if, if anyone has specific things that they want to know, I can post specific stuff on that. We can go live mm -hmm. about it. Uh, okay. Because it's a really Good. interesting topic. Yeah, really, really. And it's easy to say that, but then, you know, breaking each activity down. So I think that would be helpful. Okay, so here's yeah. this activity, and this is how you can make it harder, and this is how you can make it easier, and these are some things to watch for. So, yes, create some posts like that, please. Sure. I have so many videos that are ready to post, be posted out. So I, I, could, I could make that happen. Yes. So wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. And let's do this again. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. This yes. My and pleasure. And thank I you, everybody, you. for joining us. Yeah. Yes. Thank Stay you. Stay healthy, be strong, and exercise. Yes.